Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of this radical feminist book so that we can see what their philosophy is all about, come up with solutions, rebuttals, and have a deeper understanding of their philosophy. And that will give us insights into why people have decided to adhere to this perspective. Let's begin. Bismillah. Women are now allowed to want things more than they want the love and approval of men. Okay, now allowed to want things more than they want the love and approval of men. And that's a shift that is slowly offending society as we know it. In the meantime, I am sick of watching the most brilliant women I know expend their energy, wreck their hearts, and waste their time on endless unpaid internships of straight romance. Okay, so let's... Unpaid internships. Okay, so unpaid. So if they pay you though, you're a prostitute because you're being paid for sexual services that's very transactional if you want to have a transactional relationship you can get something us muslims can't do this but in the show on hbo succession one of the sons he pays a lady to be his woman right and it's really quite awkward if you want that type of setup, it's not really going to work out for you, I'd argue. It's very awkward, but don't describe a relationship as an internship. You know, that's a very awkward way of describing the person you chose to be with you. How the job is done is really the point of an internship. You're getting experience to put on your resume so that you can get hired. Seeing a you in the girlfriend phase as being an internship makes it sound like you are cooking and cleaning and allowing the man to have access to your body in hopes that he proposes. But you should not be cooking and cleaning for someone who is not in a committed relationship with you. I don't argue. I used to think that you should do that, but I see the error of my ways because you're giving them a lot of services when they could literally have five different girls on their roster and you're wasting your time. It's really about the first thing that catches them is like your beauty, your personality, mainly your beauty though. And it has nothing to do with being straight, rather it's just I would argue how some people go about their relationships. but. For her to describe endless unpaid internships of straight romance is, is awkward. It's a very awkward phrasing. Quite bizarre, really. Waiting to be invited into men's hearts, even though they know they'll instantly be handed a mop and a bucket and told to start scrubbing. I mean, I like... Everyone's going to have their own flow of how they like their home. Some people want a perfect pencil holder. Some leave their pens out. I have a drawer where all my pens are. All my children's writing utensils are in either a jar somewhere, like on the windowsill, or we have those plastic Tupperwares. You know, you how you're organized is, is going to be about your mind, right? The kitchen... I like to keep it as best as I can tidied up. It's hard when your child is under the age of two where they're trying to destroy everything and knocking things over, you know. You don't have to be on top of them because they are exploring the world and you have to focus on them. And it also depends on your support network. But you must be very, very careful because insects are horrible when they get into your home. You want to prevent lice, you want to prevent bed bugs, you want to prevent cockroaches, centipedes, parasites, 
you really want to be careful and you got to start scrubbing. You do that when you're single, so therefore, why is it, you know, why would that stop once you get in a relationship? If you want to split your chores, have a talk about who does what. You know, it's really that simple, to be honest. I'm sick of watching my most sensitive, empathetic friends reshape themselves around luckluster boyfriends, pouring their care and emotional labor into propping up the walking wounded of late-stage capitalism, as if the only way a woman could ever change the world was one man at a time. Okay, so changing the world by changing a man. You can make a man a villain by breaking his heart, that's for sure. You can traumatize him and he can go absolutely berserk. But if you are emotionally available in a non-combative way that's non-degrading, you're not trying to cut him down all the time, that can give him sometimes the boost he needs. Now, that depends on how much you're willing to pour out. You are not an endless hose of water supply of liquid love. But you have you can't keep him in the desert. You gotta nourish him and rehydrate his feelings and be empathetic at times. You know, she just said that these women were sensitive and empathetic, but then is mad that they're pouring their their care and emotional labor into a man. I don't really see why this is a problem of capitalism. I don't get that because in the communist state, are the women not giving emotional labor like in China to their husbands? Or in socialism, you don't have to be kind to your husband because you get a check from the government or something for basic housing and food and shelter? Then the man just kind of move the goalposts and you're going to have to find another way to keep them. I mean, is, it's our, is romance the, the Chinese standard? Is Cuba the standard for relationships? I don't really see how the economic system inhibits uh, someone from being a good partner. And as in the rest of the gig economy, the ideal worker is young, vulnerable, and easy to exploit. Okay, so she's taking a jab at the gig economy. Okay, so she's mad at ca late stage capitalism, the gig economy, and thinks of relationships as endless unpaid internships. So she has a very economic way of viewing relationships. It's one way sociologically to look at the relationships of humans with each other. <sighs> when you're young, you're vulnerable because you have less trauma, usually, right? I think a lot of women, including myself, when you're you get your first love, you're super vulnerable. You don't know how to have a guard up, but that's why you need a good mama and you need a good grandma around you to give you that womanly wisdom and then you you also have the sharia because islam tells you don't free mix with men don't use intoxicants a lot of women will start drinking getting bubbly and giggly and being vulnerable in scantily clad outfits or even if it's not about clothing that elicits lust it's just being alone in the car with a man who isn't your husband it is very vulnerable and men will take advantage of that. Also, a lot of vulnerable girls who are young who come from broken homes where the, the parents and the family have not maintained the ties of kin and kinship, these girls get exploited by pimps uh, who are very sex positive. So she encourages women to give up the booty by the third day and says there's nothing wrong with women selling money, I mean, selling themselves for money. But then it's talking about exploitation. So relationships, she said the nuclear family is not a win for women, but being an independent woman who sleeps around is somehow better. 
it's better to be scrubbing things at home than to be uh, fixing the errors of your boss or cooking the books for him. You know, it, it's a very weird thing. You know, it, you're set, the older you get, you're really set in your ways. You're kind of scarred. You're a bit more jaded. Your eyes are more aware. You're more keen on patterns. You get more tired as a woman, I think, the older you get. And you want to put up with less. With less. I think it's just the... And after you've had children, you know, you have gone through the tornado of emotion. So, you're not as easy to exploit. I'm not saying the women who are like, I know my worth. It's not what I mean. It's just that you're not as stupid. So... A guy can't fool you as easy and get you into bed, ideally. Women writers, artists, creators, professionals struggle just as much as men to break through in our fields. We have to do as, oh, we have to do the hustle, the hard work, the late nights and longing, and the crippling self-doubt. We have to deal with everything men have to deal with. And then we also have to deal with the men. We have to meet their expectations, be brilliant enough to get noticed, but also somehow not interesting enough to make them angry. Hmm. I mean, the dynamicism of how you attract a mate and get respect in your cultures, it's tough on context. That's why I don't think I'd ever want to live someplace other than America because I only know how to be American. In another culture, I'd probably be hated. You know, some cultures don't want you to ride a horse. They don't want you to say anything. I don't know. Some cultures got some weird customs. So you got to figure out where you fit in. That's what I'd argue. I wouldn't fit in in the LinkedIn liberal crowd. Because what they determine is brilliant is not what I determine is brilliant. You just got to make sure you're in the right room. And your man may not be in the room you're in. You may be at work. But he's not even interested in that field. You know. You got to figure out where he is and then go find him. So he can notice you. If we are disabled... Neuro, atypical, queer, indigenous, of color. All the woke terms right here. Disabled. Okay, what kind of disability are we talking about? I mean, if a guy is super handsome and he's a veteran and he has, doesn't have a, 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 a part of his leg from the knee down and, and one of his legs is a cool robot leg and he can still perform his masculine tasks of intimacy and he's still fertile he can have children and uh he you know bills are paid i don't have to go to work that's fine there's no problem with that bionics are coming to help people who are disabled but if he's in a wheelchair uh i'm not he can't use his members and that's going to be hard starting that's going to be hard because then how are you going to raise a family with a guy who's disabled now, if your husband gets disabled, it's quite different. Neuro atypical, what does that mean? If you're a weirdo and you're doing strange things that make me feel unsafe, I don't have to be with you. And if you're looking from a eugenics perspective, I mean, if you want humans to be super strong and healthy and make it into the future, breeding for temperament and IQ is important, but... Uh, even Larry David, that character on Curb Your Enthusiasm, in the last season, uh, he was talking to someone who was, a, like, they wanted a sperm donor for their surrogacy or something like that, and he was trying to pitch the idea that he's super a high IQ, but then his friend, who's a black guy, said, I'm part of the Big Johnson Club, and the woman picked the black guy with the Big uh, Johnson. She didn't pick for IQ. So, you know, when this lady is trying to say, like, neuroatypical, some women will pick based on the male member from perceived stereotypes. Some women will pick things just based on the man's physique. And some women, like, 
They like those feminine K-pop Korean boys who look androgynous. So at the end of the day, you're going to get what you're attracted to if you look for it. But again, she doesn't clarify what exactly she means by this sort of being different neurologically. Queer, indigenous, I mean, there's tons of, I chose an indigenous man. My husband is from the Yucatan Peninsula. He's Mayan. He speaks Maya, Spanish, and English. He grew up on a farm, didn't have electricity till he was seven. He's basically the, like, America has the tribal peoples, but they still have modern water. They're, they're not really living an indigenous life on a homestead or in the woods. They're living in apartments like everybody else. But indigenous as in way rural, like, he lived in the jungle. The schools, there wasn't any of this formal, there's no internet there at that time. Like, totally way rural than anything America could offer because you're looking at Latin America. You know, I picked an indigenous man. And he was interesting because he also was indigenous. Just this exotic foreign culture. This sort of Mexican Tarzan who had a farm when his mom had ten children and his father did hunting and it was just that's what I like so those indigenous people in Mexico are getting married and those indigenous women are actually some of them being picked up by those disgusting passport bros so so I mean there's nothing wrong with being indigenous they're super traditional and religious they're not vapid gold diggers and materialists so why would someone not pick them they're literally more submissive wives. I mean, I can't compare to the women in his village. Yeah, I'm different. I'm American. You know, we have we're just different. There, those women are like just super bare bones. It's like you can't compare a woman who's living in Saudi Saudi Arabia in the city to the woman who's like living a full blown Bedouin life. She's just different. You know, someone who's been a Bedouin their whole life and never went to a really good primary school. Never seen a PlayStation. You know, she's going to have a totally different interests. But if she's beautiful, she ain't going to have a hard time. If you're attractive and you're not a moron and you're not an arrogant bastard, you're going to do all right, I'd argue, so not sure why she's putting the indigenous in there she's just trying to be super woke super progressive super liberal trying to get those brownie points in you know or of color so she's trying to say uh we have to meet their expectations and be brilliant enough to get noticed uh but uh somehow if you're not if you're black it's like you're gonna be disqualified I mean, that would be, the whole continent of Africa has black people, and there's tons of black people all over the world, so I'm not really understanding this point of view. It's even more difficult to match that standard. I saw, I don't remember what country it was, if it was Kenya or Uganda, but this woman had to wear this really fluffy tribal dress and cook a meal for her in-laws so they could see her skills before they accepted her in marriage. So those in, those cultures have their own standards of what a woman will have to do to be picked. I think it's very strange how she's ignoring the patriarchal systems in Africa and the patriarchal systems of the indigenous cultures. You know, it's it's a very very bizarre, mm, very bizarre. And the more we deviate from the romantic ideal, the less leeway. We have to make a single mistake in any other aspect of our lives. What kind of mistakes are we talking about, though? Right? I've made mistakes. We all do. And you're like, oh, lesson learned. But in Islam, it's like you may like dislike a thing about your wife, and then you might like something else. So don't throw someone away just because they've done these simple mistakes. Look at the whole picture. The romantic ideal. Okay, so whose 
romantic ideal are we talking about? The female, uh, I, the female Christian ideal of a good husband is not my ideal. I'm not into that. So, whose cultural ideal are we talking about? Down the centuries, men have created a social, economic, and political system that makes it all but impossible for women to reject them. Okay, let's break this down. Men have created a social and economic plus political system that makes it really hard for women to reject them. Okay, social, so, oh, don't be the childless witch in the woods. Get married and have a family and be happy. Uh, economic. Don't depend on a man. Be a careerist. Turn into Hillary Clinton. Work until your your knuckles hurt. Get in there. Why stay home with your children and enjoy your life when you can be sweating and hard backbreaking labor instead of letting your man take care of you? Political system. That doesn't, political system as in what, women can terminate their pregnancies, they can sell, what are we, they can sell, I need my matcha latte, I'm going to make it after this, they can sell themselves in Oakland, Las Vegas, so the sexual liberation has allowed women to you know, do very disgusting things. So I don't really see how the political system has held degeneracy down. Women can earn money in a lot of ways now, so I don't really see her point. This is why the concept that women's consent might more than fleetingly matter create such cognitive dissonance. A good man value consent. Okay? But don't put yourself in a position where if you don't do, if you don't consent, that the man can still take it regardless. That's a very valuable lesson. I wish I would have learned that earlier. You know? You don't, just because someone knocks on your door doesn't mean you have to answer. Don't just get in the car because somebody offered you a ride, you know, this guy from school or something. Stop trusting men. That's the best way. It might be weird to see men as predators, but you cannot just think because you're a woman they're going to be nice to you. There's, It's just very bizarre. And being polite and nice to a mentally ill man who's smoked meth and he's harassing you, it's just not going to work. Don't put yourself in the position to where if your consent is retracted, they are able to do whatever they want. That's why the Second Amendment matters. Think about it. It's not that men have nothing to offer women anymore. On the contrary. But the things they have to offer aren't the things that they have been taught are valuable. John Berger's famous 2015 book, Date Anomics, How Dating Became a Lopsided Numbers Game, made the argument that the dating market is skewed in favor of men because of the relative scarcity of marriageable men who are college educated. So... Scarcity mindset, I'd say good men, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go find that stag, you gotta go get them, you gotta go get them, you gotta find them. Now, if you wanna sit yourself on a rock like a mermaid and expect the prince to come and put a ring on it right away, it can be hard, you know, but...
college educated doesn't always mean that they're going to be a good husband. I understand there's data that says if you're college educated, you get divorced less. But it's really about money when you look at what some women fear. You know, they don't want to be living in a box watching their kids starve with no good health insurance. Because love doesn't fill your belly. A man can tell you he loves you, but if he's not bringing home enough, he doesn't deserve to be married then. But if a woman is willing to marry a broke man and live in a trailer in squalor, I mean, that's up to her. Because you can't have intimacy outside of marriage from an Islamic perspective. But not everyone is guaranteed a wife or a husband and being chased until you die is important. And broke men, if they just don't get married, but they get into paradise and qualify for the Huri al Ain, they'll have them there. So, I mean, think about it. There are lots of marriageable men, but it's finding them which is a difficult part, which is why I think artificial intelligence should be used. Hmm. The book, which is exactly what would happen if a statistician tried to write softcore pornography, takes it as a fact that college educated is the main scarcity factor, when in fact many women are looking for a partner with a stable personality rather than a stable retirement fund. Stable personality. Hmm, as in like he doesn't fly off the handle? He's not an emotional wreck? College guarantees neither. Interestingly, in building his statistical models of dateable men, okay, I don't want to, I don't care about that. Let's skip down. The bottom line is that men are not obliged to choose between being powerful and independent and being loved. And women are. That's just our destiny. You know, we gotta stop trying to be like men. I don't understand the glorification of work. I don't get it. You can have your passion. Like, I saw a chick during the sweet and sour sniffles pandemic. She had two masks on. She was fat, working at CVS, and looked miserable as hell. And she lost weight and took care of herself, took off the damn masks, and wanted to stay home, that'd be better. CVS ain't missing her. Is she independent and powerful by working at CVS? No shame to the CVS workers. But, I mean, if a, if she got a husband who wanted to retire her and take her to a homestead and she could be with her kids... Wouldn't that be preferable? It's like these women think they're pinky in the succession show of HBO. They want to be like her. Like just this cutthroat, sexually promiscuous, wealthy harpy. I hated that character. She was, she acted too much like a man, you know? And yet, in the end, ironically, her effeminate husband became the CEO. And then she was rubbing his hand and then accepted him. After she had, like, uh, she got pregnant, but she was leading him on. You know, dragging him. She was cucking him. Total way she treated him was horrible. He had no self-esteem. Even though he was genuinely a loyal good guy. She was a pervert, you know, but... When he finally got the power and exceeded her, then she submitted. It's funny. She somehow became a feminist icon, yet in the end she submitted to the man. And she does have her own wealth, but she still submitted to him. And she didn't have to let go of power to be loved. But she had to change her personality problems. Because arrogance can come with money when you start earning it. And you start to become untouchable. You know? The Khaleesi effect. Perhaps one of the reasons that so many men seem so afraid of accomplished, well-rounded women is the reasonable fear that they too will have to become more rounded. Hmm. 
Maybe. I just think it's how you present yourself. It's really hard when you've gained knowledge to not be smug, arrogant, flippant, nonchalant. You can be on your high horse too much. You know, it's a it's a it's a tough thing. Like a like I saw a video. I don't recall, but it was some red pill moron. A a woman couldn't name three countries, but she was beautiful. And there are these guys who are red pillars who say they don't care about a woman's education, only about her youth, beauty, and fertility were making fun of her. And then I've heard men say, we like them young and dumb. A young, dumb virgin is better than a college-educated single mom. And then you're like, okay, make up your mind here. So, and then Megan Kelly and Tommy Lauren had some tweets in the past. Well, they're like, oh, we're accomplished, and it takes a real man to be with us. And I don't get it. You'll see men make fun of women for being very extremely dumb. And then you see men who say, hey, if you're going to be a housewife and homeschool, you need to have some basic common sense. So, I mean, it just really comes down to picking the right kind of guy. Some women are completely out of the woods. I'm talking, you like so low IQ, you wonder how they even made it out the door. But I mean, there are men who will do things with dead bodies and animals. So, are we surprised that some men will pick some women who are really stunted? And then, by having children with that kind of a woman, you know, you wonder, are you dooming your sons to be retarded? Uh, and then they won't, not Down Syndrome, I mean like the cultural slang of retardation. Like as in you're just not really up there, you don't have uh, all the tools in the shed. So you wonder if men's selfish lust is actually making the human race dumber because they don't choose high IQ women. Right? If you don't have high IQ women maybe giving birth to high IQ boys, then the quality of men goes down, right? I mean, it sounds like a eugenicist philosophy, but... I think men can value intelligence. It's just about how do you maintain your femininity in a playful, sexual, romantic way? You know? Because sometimes the weight of knowledge wears you down, and you're not as... You're not this naive fairy prancing around in the forest with flowers in your hair it's 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 strange there's a lot less women could talk about when it comes to that but again our perspective is different than men's you know it's much different if they are no longer useful only because of their contacts and the contents of their wallet they may have to work on the content of their character yeah, I do think that a lot of the disgusting red pill men, they always talk about, it's just about money, like getting money. They don't really talk about how a man can keep the love life of his wife. Because they rotate women like shoes. They complain about whores and expect a virgin, but they never tell a man how to retain his wife. And then they often say, like, you know, women come a dime a dozen, so why even try? Just replace her. So it's just filling the earth with single moms and abortions, and broken homes, and, and bastards. So they're not really helping. You, you come across the sort of wiser, older men who've been in a marriage for a long time. They'll tell you stuff about... How their content of their character helped keep their wife when bills got high. It matters, but, you know, you gotta just make sure you try to pick someone who you like. Who, who has a personality you can actually tolerate. Because it's easy to tolerate bad personalities when they have money. And if you're still young, you can replace them. But if you're pushing 40, it's going to be harder to replace 
those mans, you're gonna have to have money. But even if you become independent and you have your own money, and you leave your man who lost his money, you'll still crave having somebody take care of you. But it'll be harder for you to get a man to fill the shoes once you hit 40, even though you got all the plastic surgery. If they are no longer useful, oh yeah, refusing to settle for mediocrity in life or in a partnership is a quiet private act of rebellion for women and femmes. Okay, mediocrity? Settling for mediocrity. You don't have to settle for mediocrity, but I would say that you can compromise on some things. Just like the man's gonna compromise because... You have your standards, no doubt. Like some standards you have to hold the line, but no doubt there's definitely going to be times when you can shift in the sand a little bit, you know? You're not going to be unbowed, unbent, unbroken yeah, all the time. A little bit of leeway helps. A dog that's always on a tight leash and never given any slack uh, tends to feel the tension through the leash and then eventually can't be normal around you because they're always skittish. In fact, one trait that the women I know who are successful, happy and confident as it is possible to be in a time of global crisis have in common is that they do refuse to settle in any aspect of their lives. They know their own worth. There it is. <laughs> it is the, the ego. Ego. I mean, in any aspect. In any aspect. Your heaviest cards are when you're at your hottest. You can't... Just, I don't know why it's really offensive for women. It's your best weapon. It's your best bait. Because when you get kids and your body changes or you have like, it's just things are so different. You don't have the same cards, you know. Your worth as a, you know, mu'min, as a believer before Allah is going to be different than, you know, how a man is going to see you. He's going to treat you with basic dignity. But that doesn't mean he wants to marry you and... Uh, fund your lifestyle or submit to all your tyrannies or have learned to act as if they do they want a seat at the table a slice of the pie they won't accept crumbs in the corner most of them spent years developing that mindset why would they change it now for a man who might one day let them down you can put it on Hibernation, right? That's how I look at it for myself. You know, your tool sets are always gonna be there. Just, I mean, you don't, you don't have to ha like. I got an axe. I'm not gonna carry the axe around with me everywhere I go. It's gonna be put in the shed for when I need it. So that mindset will be used when it's needed. You know, that's what I'd argue. Like, I had a very, I ha, well, I still have it, but I have a mindset where it's like, I'll earn my money if I have to, and I can cut so cold, but I want to be with my children, and so I'll be more warm. I'll be more... compatible, more compromising, uh, p passive sometimes even, you know, less, less forward. I don't need to be because I'm not in the combative, competitive mindset that I bring home from work, you know. So if I were to leave a relationship, then I have to charge up those tools again right plug them in let's get her done but if I'm home my children my parents 
those mindsets that I gained over the years of working and succeeding in my various adventures is not really relevant now, is it? You know? So you're always going to be let down and have a curveball. But that doesn't mean you walk around with a chip on your shoulder and become a miserable winch. A tenure track position cannot walk out on you because it met someone on Instagram who really listens. Okay, so a tenure track position, you, your boss can just fire you willy-nilly. There are people who were fired uh, for, for not taking the jab. Soldiers were told you had to take it or else, and then later they changed that. There were police officers who didn't want to take it. They said, if you don't take it, you're going to get laid off. Students who were in college, working their asses off, were told, if you do not comply, you cannot come to our institutions. I had, I was laid off from a job that I watched them build the building. I watched things get installed because I was working right next to that building. And I planned to apply. I got hired. And I went through the training program, which was extremely boring, okay? They made us memorize everything. And later, when they had to lay people off, they didn't give a crap about me. They just mailed me my final check. Not even a thank you for working with us. We're sorry we have to do this. No text from the manager. Nothing at all from nobody. Just, you know you're fired because they sent you your last check cold didn't even see it coming you know they kept telling us uh, a couple more days to let we'll people back they were waiting on the state of california to allow people to do indoor dining because there wasn't enough outdoor tables for people to eat so they could only do to go and you don't need that much staff but you know they just cut you off real quick real quick like nothing so <laughs> you know i've taken people's jobs as well I have been hired, and then the boss sees how I work, and then I take that person's job who's slacking. And if you're smart, when you go to a job, you see who's lacking, and you outperform them, and you compete, and you get that job. You get that promotion, you know. And you make sure the boss sees it. So, I mean, all wealth is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All opportunities are due to him by his permission. But trust me. Jobs will replace you super easy, you know. You're nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, come on. So I don't agree with her here. Your job might disappear, but it won't take the good China with it. Your savings may only be as reliable as the global financial system, but that's still a lot more reliable than a lot of millennial men. Hmm. Hmm. You can get cancer, illnesses, hit by a car. A crackhead can, you know, harm you. A gangbanger can carjack you. Life is unpredictable. Earth is a raw planet. If you can't rely on a man, you pick the wrong man. I believe in my husband. Alhamdulillah. You gotta pick a man who doesn't drink. And who doesn't smoke weed and who doesn't uh, use drugs. You gotta see what kind of work ethic he has. His field of work will also tell you that. You can depend upon a, a hard working man. But you gotta be worthy of that man. You gotta like that kind of a man. If you got a playboy and you're complaining about you can't rely on him. That's your fault. If you picked a drug dealer... When he's in prison, now you're with your kids working graveyard shifts. You chose that idiot. You can't rely on a gangbanger. You can't rely on a bad boy. You can't rely on a criminal. You can't rely on a drug addict. You can't rely on an alcoholic. You can't rely on a guy you met in a club who's was who started making out with you in the bathroom when he just met you. You can't rely on a man who uh, tapped it on the first day he met you. He has, he has no impulse control. You can't rely on somebody who has low impulse control. I mean, come on now. Given the choice between men's love on the one hand and security, independence and personal power on the other, 
many women are choosing the latter. It's not an easy choice. It's still a choice that invites pity. But for more and more of us, it is a positive one. And one that may change power relations between genders forever. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely changing power dynamics, you know. When a man has absolute control over his woman and she's fully dependent on him. I mean, you are kind of in a corner there. And he can see that. And he has to be merciful and just. And he has to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he'll be held responsible for what he did to you. Mm, you know, but... Don't do it because you want his love. I would say do it because you want to be your children to be raised... Uh, with health insurance and good food and be able to make memories with them and protect them from evil. That's why, uh, you know, if you're working all day and your kids are in a daycare, Monday, th like they're at school Monday through Friday, and then they go to aftercare, you're spending max maybe one, two hours with them. It doesn't work. You know, part-time parenting doesn't really work. It's really hard on the children, but to be dependent and sacrifice for your children to make the relationship work, I'd argue, is better. If Security, it's hard because there are good women who have had degenerate husbands who flip the script. They get into porn, you know, they're selling their houses, they're, you know, in debt from gambling. That's a problem, you know, and some of those women get left high and dry. But hopefully, there's a secular solution, as in the welfare system, public housing, because we don't have a Sharia law, so it's not like we have these things for widows and orphans on the same level. But there are private charities, there's things you can do, side hustles, you know, from home, find a way to make it work if he decides to get rid of you. You know, but it comes down to picking the right guy, I'd argue. Wow. If women are no longer running on a frantic schedule, trying to find a marriageable man before the song stops in the great mercenary game of musical chairs that is modern dating, if women are no longer obliged to seek love on men's terms, if we are prepared to walk away from love that hurts and humiliates and exhausts us, that's more than empowerment. It is a new form of collective bargaining in the sphere of love's work. Okay, so you can walk away from something that doesn't serve you if there's just not children involved, I'd argue. Now, my great-grandma stayed with somebody who was quite evil and it traumatized her children she should have left but she had no college education uh, she was 17 I think when she got first married and he did unspeakable acts to his own daughters including uh, incest so she didn't have any education or money to walk away mm, she's still alive my great grandma she's like 97 or something and you know, she should have left, but what was she to do? Women in that generation didn't have as many options, you know. She's old. My grandma's mom is still alive. She's old. And, you know, so it was not a good situation. But what do we mean by humiliation, you know? Sometimes a little humiliation can bring us down a bit. Especially women who call themselves goddesses. They, that is so off-putting. And if a man just says, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how it is. And she gets that blunt reality check, it can sometimes humble her. You know? Also, some women, a little bit of checking of the ego actually turns them on. Which is interesting. Because the man is holding the line, not tolerating her, her, her bull that she's pulled on others. And she's like, oh, wow. So it really depends on both personalities. If the love hurts, like he's constantly high, well, hell yeah, you got to get the hell out of that relationship. 
you know, exhausting you. Life is exhausting, but if they're depleting you more than they're rejuvenating you, uh, then sure, go ahead and leave, but make sure the kids are grown. My whole thing is the age of the children. The age of the children. You know, when they're 18, you want to leave the husband? Fine. But let them get through school at least. You know, that's rough as a kid to go through that when you're young and your parents are just like going through all of that. What do you think, fam? Let me know. She said quite a lot here. And I don't agree with a lot of it. But I can see what she's trying to say. Women will have to choose between do you want to try to have it all or do you want to make memories with your kids? You know, what kind of job do you qualify for, for right now? Is that job worth more than the memories of your kids? You know, there's a lady who, I think there's a little bit of the evil eye coming from her. Because she had to stop nursing her kid and go back to work at the bakery and she just has this really strange energy whenever she sees me go for my morning coffee and pastry with my toddler. It's just kind of creepy and I'm not going to get too much into the details but when and like I think she wishes she could be home because she randomly will come to me and say oh look this is my son and her son is a couple months older than my daughter and you can tell as a woman, you can tell that she misses her kid while she's at work. I felt like that when I had mine. And I think she wishes she could be home with her kid, but her man maybe doesn't work enough. He's not going to put her... He's not going to retire her from the workforce. He's totally fine with being a beta and making his woman slave away at a bakery job. Right? So... Would it be better for her to be home with her child and be happy and make her man suffer and work? Like his job? So she can be with her kid? Or is it better for her kid to be at the daycare and and sad, wondering where she is? So she can work at a bakery? I don't get it. It's about the age thing with me. If, but if they can be with your grandparents in a loving, happy place... I can understand a, a little bit, like let's say you want to work three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you want to have your grandparents, the grandparents watch them from like, for 8 a.m. to 3.30, you know, something like that. I think that's okay, but once you start pulling in past 25 hours a week, you got to ask yourself, you know. Is the honor of your motherhood traded for that job? I'm not trying to degrade anyone's work, you know. I've had all kinds of jobs. I've been a telemarketer. I've, you know, trust me, I understand boring jobs. But I regret working while pregnant with my first. And I regret uh, going back to work. Because I missed my first child. And I love being a stay-at-home mom now with my second. I can compare the the life. I can compare the happiness levels. The mental health levels. And I understand myself I'm not a very sociable person. I don't belong in the workforce. I wanted to be a philosophy teacher. That's a lot easier I'd argue because you're working with a specific set of students but when you are in customer service you're dealing with the general public and that weighs on you and I'm tired of coming home well, I was in the past I was tired of coming home so jaded and uh, depleted it drains you it makes you so masculine it's very hard to be feminine when you have to have grown men and bitchy women argue with you over something and you always have to be smiling. It's very draining. Customer service is just not my wheelhouse. But it's what I'm trained in, right? It's what, you know, it's what I'm trained in. Even though on my own YouTube channel, I'm very, <laughs> I don't seem like I'm someone who could play that part. But, you know, 
I'm free on my YouTube channel. I'm not confined by a micromanager who's taking notes and, you know, trying to make my life hell. Right? So, when you think of this woman, and she's talking about security and independence, pick a man who doesn't use drugs. Pick a man who isn't a gang member. My mom picked men who had money, but they didn't have... They were criminals. And they have flashy stuff, and it, it can come to an end so fast once they go to jail. Once they go to prison. You know, they don't have good morals. So, there's no security. Didn't, you know, Carmela Soprano, in the end of The Sopranos, her Tony was shot. How many of those women, their husbands were shot? They lived a very nice life uh, with all the glitz and glamour. They depended on him. They didn't get an education. And when their husbands were shot or sent to prison, they were on their own. And if their husband snitched on them, uh, they were excluded from the funds of the mafia. There's a lesson there, right? You, you pick a criminal man, he can't be loyal to you because he's a criminal, he's a deviant. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. There's no honor amongst thieves. You can't expect love and loyalty from someone who has to be able to put a bullet in somebody or they have to rip someone off or they're constantly in anxiety of escaping the law. They just trick really dumb women into falling in love with them. It's, it's hilarious yet sad when you look at it in the long run. So... Picking a husband is one of the most important decisions of your life. They push college on you as a woman right away, and that includes lots of debt. You know, so you're not financially independent when you're thousands of dollars in debt. That isn't financial independence. You are in debt. You are not free. And you can't declare bankruptcy on those loans. So how, you know, what are we talking about here? <laughs> right? Let me know what you think. And, uh, I, I'm the love for Islam because uh, the mental gymnastics of feminists, you know, it's very daunting, very daunting. If you'd like to support my work, you can do so via my blog at www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.